This rabbit hole goes way deeper than I ever expected. If you've ever had plastic surgery, if you live in the first world, if you've ever been to a doctor in your life, really, you need to hear this story. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jesse Lyon, a licensed counselor who gives you the psychology behind pop culture. And today, shout out to May Day over on the Discord server, links to everything down in the description below, for sending me this video, but it sent me on a rabbit trail, a, a goose chase, to find out the information that I didn't know that I needed to know. And so now, you're gonna go along with it because, well, we gotta start out with the first video. This, this is what May Day had sent me. <clears throat> Horrifying, horrifying. If you're a woman, if you have ever been to a doctor, this is something that you need to be aware of because it's way more common than you may expect. Nine out of 10 women tell me that they woke up with implants that were two to three times larger than they asked for. What? what? First of all, what? <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get cut open and have my insides rearranged and the doctor doesn't honor what? my requests for my insides being rearranged why is that why did why do they do that so this is what we are all told across the board that women are always going to wish that they had gotten bigger implants and to save you money and time these surgeons who their whole business is based on making money okay. say i'm going to just forego you having to worry about wanting bigger implants later and i'm going to go ahead and give you bigger implants but see, to me, that makes no sense because wouldn't wouldn't the doctor then get to charge like two surgery fees? Like, you know, you say like, oh, I just want to be a C, right? And then you get a C and you're like, damn, this is great. Like double D's, let's go. Don't you, like, you, you would make more money by giving the person what they want and then letting them change their mind, right? So like, I don't understand, but I have a theory that I'm going to share with you in a second. I'll let the video finish first. These women, some have been told they would get 350 cc's and they wake up with 600. Well, I just want to understand, like, how That's do you even legally allowed to do that? I don't know, but I guarantee if you were to take a poll and ask women if they got the size implants they asked for or if they were bigger than they ever wanted and they all cover them up, just watch and see how many women say. That's exactly what happened to them. Damn. I would say it's close to 90%. Damn, 90%? So I was, I was first of all, no, no room to speak on this topic. Uh, born male, identify as male, not part of my lived experience. So I was like, no way. You know, and so a couple things, couple things. First of all, you look at the comments and it's like, why aren't there massive lawsuits? And then someone says that there are some massive lawsuits that are going on. And then a lot of other people are saying, I asked for C, woke up with double D. Surgeon said he evaluated my shoulder to waist ratio and this was the proper proportion. In fact, all the OR staff agreed. I hated them. They're all gone now. They got shut down, right? This one said, that happened to me. Even had it in writing. I asked him not to change my 350 cc's. Woke up to 620. No lawyer would take my case because he had already been sued by over 250 women. He was allowed to practice. What? It's 100% true, says Anna McDowell. I signed up for surgery, consent for 400 cc's. Woke up in recovery with 600 cc's. In Insane. So a lot of people are saying like this is not legal. Like they've been they've been taken to court. There are lawsuits like still pending. Some people are saying like the lawsuits do nothing, right? And so it's like my mind has been opened to a whole new world of reality, right? And I gotta say, so of course I asked my better half. I asked my wife. I was like, listen, what's your kind of experience on this? And she goes on to tell me in our insurance, right? She handles the insurance claims for us in the family, right? And so she handles all that. She's amazing. She's wonderful. And she tells me that oftentimes when she's on the phone with the insurance company, asking questions, signing things up, that they won't give her any of the information because she's not the man of the house. I haven't signed a document. <laughs> I haven't set anything up. They haven't never talked to me. She's been the one to sign, set it up. She's the one that was the original policy holder for the insurance. I'm added under her plan. Right, because she took charge of it, right? This which I think is great. But they won't they won't talk to her. Like the discrimination is insane. So so okay, so here here we go, right? Now now my mind is racing. Now my mind is running. I'm like, oh my gosh, do you remember? You guys remember? Anybody who's been longtime followers of the channel knows this video. 
that I posted. So I'm going to jog your memory. And if you haven't seen this video, and if you're not a subscriber and liking the videos, what are you doing? Do me a favor, subscribe down below. It helps share mental health content with those who need it. And I promise you, I'm going to get to a theory of my own about why this happens coming here in a second. But do you guys remember this? Ohio surgeon has license suspended after live streaming procedure on TikTok. Dr. Gaw, who practiced in Powell, Ohio, had her license suspended in November after the state board alleged that she endangered patients by pausing to respond to online viewers' questions while the procedures were going. And then... True story. True story. True story. She would live stream stuff on TikTok. She would live stream procedures, right? Now, she was a surgeon. But the type of surgery that she would do was, again, cosmetic surgery, right? She was doing like, I think it was, it was famous, right? The, the, um, the, the title of this video is Dr. Livestream's Butt Lift Loses License. And that's what she was doing. She was doing cosmetic surgery stuff. And so then, I, then my mind continues to go, right? And I'm like, do you guys also remember Dr. Kim? Remember this video? Freaking horrifying I mean, could you imagine not well researching your doctor like before you go and get a plastic surgery done and you and you come out looking like this and the person who responded to this video has a great point actually okay put this into perspective imagine your dad saying hey guys i'm gonna go on vacation and when i get back i'm gonna have a little bit of work done and you're like you know that's fine you're getting older you have the right to feel good about yourself like if you want to look a little bit younger that's fine and then your dad comes home looking like that. I don't know what I would say. I don't, I don't know what I would say, right? I mean, and then the same thing with the other plastic surgeons, like, you know, yeah, you know, you get a, you get a divorce, right? You know, or maybe the kids are, are grown up and it's like, well, you know, I'm in, I'm in my fifties or maybe my sixties, right? And the kids are grown up. I can't stand my husband, never could stand my husband. So we're finally getting the divorce now that the kids are moved out. I'm going to get back out in the dating pool, get a little work done, feel good about myself. I've been successful in my career. And then your kids see you and you got these like, melons that you had not signed up for just just pumpkins right from the patch you know charlie brown colin look it's a great pumpkin charlie brown and it's your grandma <laughs> and not what you signed up for you know and so I'm, i saw the rabbit hole right and so i'm like what what happened to dr kim right so then i'm searching i'm like what happened to dr kim because he was huge right do you remember him and so i'm looking because i was like man let's go check out dr kim's page i want the original video so i go searching can't find Dr. Kim, right? Go go looking. No no account for Dr. Kim. So I'm like, what? I'm like, found dailymail.com. Here it is. Here's the images of yikes of everything Dr. Kim. But I'm like, no, no, Dr. Kim. Where's Dr. Kim? And so I'm like, ah. Now apparently all the videos about Dr. Kim have their sound muted, right? The sound is gone. So you see he's talking, but the sound's gone. TikTok not only banned him, but banned any sound mentioning Dr. Kim. And so it's like, it's just, it's gone. Dr. Hey Kim. Guys, so it looks like the Ooh. Dr. Kim account has been banned. I figured I should update you guys since, uh, I didn't even know this. I'm the go. No, I'm just kidding. No, since I made two videos talking about it on the YouTube channel. And so I don't think I'm going to make a video on this, but hey, update, he's banned. Wild. Wild. I didn't, I didn't know that one had sound, but I was like, you can't find anything about it. So, so okay, Jesse, thanks for the thanks for the information. But what's the theory here? Now, here's the thing, right? First of all, obviously, sexism exists, right? I'm not making a video about that. What I am making a video about, though, is a lot of people don't know surgeons. Uh, I'm not going to say all of them, right? This is not my clinical advice here, but we're just hypothesizing here, right? A lot of surgeons, and if you ask other counselors, they'll tell you this too. Uh, oftentimes will have antisocial personality tendencies. I'm not going to diagnose anybody, but antisocial, right? These are what in pop culture, it's not a nice term, but in pop culture, we'll call these psychopaths, sociopaths, right? Because they don't feel empathy in the same way that maybe you or I do. And so that's, that's actually not necessarily a bad thing, right? When you're thinking about somebody who's going to cut you open and fix your insides, you want that person not to be timid, 
or not to be scared or not to be like, oh my gosh, this is a real human being. Like, is this going to be okay? You want somebody who is like, this is a car engine. This is a machine. I'm going to open this machine. I'm going to fix the insides. I'm going to put it back together because I'm the best goddamn surgeon on the face of this planet. That's the kind of energy you want because they're going to have to go in with precision, with confidence, with assertiveness, and make decisions along the way confidently, right? Now, somebody who's too far that way will make confident decisions about things that violate your consent. Now, that's not what I'm talking about. You want somebody who is confident and doesn't feel a lot of empathy to be the person who cuts you open, right? Because I don't want somebody who's nervous, right? Or, or thinking about me as a person. I want them to go in, do the job and get out, right? But sometimes it can be too far. And somebody who hasn't had mental health considerations or hasn't been screened or doesn't have a good team to hold them back from being a little bit too brazen about things is going to get into a lot of trouble. And so I think, I think you see some of this here, right? Now, obviously, you know, there's also the conversation to be had like, with counselors or doctors or car mechanics, it's like not everybody graduates top of the class, right? There are some who are just like passing with C's and they go on and, you know, there's a minimum level of competency. And as long as you pass that minimum level of competency, which honestly, for being a counselor and being a doctor, you have to go through a lot and really prove yourself. The level of minimum competency is high, right? But still, there's some people who don't graduate top of the class, they just barely made it into the profession. And so this is why it's important, you know, to vet your doctors, to think about some of this stuff. And so I wanted to share this, this kind of thought, one, obviously about sexism, but two, um, about how certain personalities kind of lend themselves more likely to be in certain professions. Um, and then just the wild story that I'm seeing here. So let me know your personal experience. Uh, how has this happened to you? Um, how are things changing? I mean, I would like to think that because of the internet, because of the conversation, we're becoming more aware of this and that we're moving away from some of this stuff. The older generation of doctors, like maybe not, you know, but again, talking in broad brushstrokes, curious to hear your opinion. And uh, we'll talk about more in the next video. Until then.